primarily the shaft since there's a greater range than any of the other components. Grip weight also factors into a certain degree, but that's more for size and comfort. And most heads, regardless of the manufacturer, weigh similarly, except for maybe hybrids, wedges, and putters. We're definitely going to fit for length, so what's the big deal with the swing weighting? Well, to answer this $64 million question, uh, I have one word, and that's tolerances. Some people will argue, will argue with me that you fit for swing weight. I say that you've already fit the club based on the components that you selected. What swing weight does is fine tune the club so you have some consistency from one club to the next. Another way to think about it is a, is a, Q, a QC or a quality control check. Swing weight is often the only specification where it requires altering when OEMs or big name manufacturers build golf clubs. They don't match shafts, they don't reset loft or lie, but they at least will try to hit a specific swing weight so all the numbered irons in the set swing weight the same. This excludes the wedges, which we'll talk about later. Now, there has to be an acceptable tolerance in the components that we buy. Otherwise, the reject rate goes sky high, and that money is passed on to the consumer in higher cost. Now, the tighter the tolerance is, the more costly it becomes. So let's look at the accepted tolerances that we find in the golf industry. Now, head weights of plus or minus 3 grams, or another way of putting it, one and a half swing weights, sounds like a lot. Actually, most of Hariko's club heads, with the exception of putters and chippers, which are not as critical, have a slightly tighter tolerance than um, what this is. That by itself has the greatest effect on the swing weight, assuming, of course, that you're able to cut your club lengths correctly. Now, shaft weights of plus or minus 3.5 grams can yield as little as a half a point either way. And the same goes for the plus or minus 3.5 gram grip weight tolerance. We've already mentioned that there's a small tolerance in the shaft's balance point. So none of these by themselves is that great. But cumulatively, you can see that there's going to be a difference. Let's say our target swing weight was D0 based on our demo club. But with the luck of the draw, with the components that were shipped to you to build, you could conceivably get a swing weight as low as C7 and as high as D3 uh, just through tolerances. And to be honest, there's quite a few golfers who lack the sensitivity to even feel that difference. And most golfers would have a hard time telling half that difference in the swing weight. But club makers, the tendency is for you to build clubs to as close as possible to the tolerances such as plus or minus one, or even tighter with the same uh, given shafts and grips. Now, the vast majority of men's clubs designed today will swing weight in the um, C9 to D3 range, while ladies will be in the C4 to C7 range. The reason for this is due to the head weights correspond to a suggested length. As a result, it will yield these swing weights with both steel and graphite shafts. Any club built over or under these lengths, you may not be able to attain the, their, that swing weight range, but don't worry, as that's perfectly acceptable. Any, um, expect any uh, clubs that you build uh, longer than those lengths uh, on this chart to be a higher swing weight and any clubs that are built uh, shorter to have a proportionally lighter swing weight. The, the club maker is going to be only responsible for matching the clubs within the set with like shafts and grips. And you want to be very careful when it comes to hybrids because you've got to make sure of the weight of the head rather than looking what's engraved on the sole. The reason is manufacturers haven't standardized hybrid heads or the hybrid head weights the same as they have the other clubs in the set. And, and if you don't 
uh, take into account the, uh, the weight of the head, this could be one reason why your swing weight could be grossly off. Okay, now it's time to use our swing weight scale. Let's say you're already at the stage in the building process that you've cut the shaft to length, but you've not yet epoxied it in place. Okay, this time there's no grip installed, yet we know that the grip cap will occupy approximately uh, an eighth inch beyond the, uh, the butt end of the shaft. And many club makers will make allowances for this by positioning the butt end of the shaft approximately eighth, uh, an eighth of an inch from the stop on the swing weight scale. What I mean by the stop is, again, if you could see that my hand here on the uh, slide, I don't know if that's showing up or not, but that's, that's the stop where the, uh, the shaft uh, butts up against the uh, swing weight scale. Okay. Um, while that practice is, is, is good, it tends to allow for like a slight error as that eighth of an inch is usually estimated. There's a more efficient way, um, and that's by placing the butt end of the shaft directly against the stop. And we'll discuss how to make the uh, allowances for that later. Now you want to insert the appropriate shaft into each head, and then one by one, place each club on the swing weight scale and write down their measurements. In our example, let's say we have swing weights that are E0 for the driver, E2 for the 3 wood, D9 for the 5 wood. Now, you don't want to be too concerned that the swing weights register this high. We've yet to add uh, the grips to the clubs, which are going to naturally reduce the swing weight. I want you to understand that not all men's clubs have to come out to that old standard D2 swing weight either. Our concern is only to balance out the tolerances with these clubs with like shafts. In our case, we'll be able to adjust all these to be the same. Now that the clubs are cut to length, we can easily calculate the finished swing weight with the grip and any buildup tape. We already discussed um, grip weight that for every five grams of grip weight, it reduces the swing weight by one point. One thing I didn't add was for every three wraps of buildup tape, um, you would see a reduction in the swing weight by one point. We have to factor this in as if, we were, uh, if we're building up the grip, because the extra weight is no different than using just a heavier weight grip. And as I mentioned earlier, we need to make some allowances for positioning the butt into the shaft against the stop on the swing weight scale, rather than estimating that eighth of an inch difference for the uh, grip cap. So all we have to do there is add one swing weight point to our preliminary swing weight and put in the values for the grip weight and the number of wraps of buildup tape in the following formula that you see in the slide. Let's say we're going to be using a uh, Golf Pride Tour Velvet Grip that weighs 50 grams and no additional wraps of build-up tape. Then for our driver, we're going to get a D1 swing weight. We started out with an E0. Okay, Remember, that's what we put the shaft in, measured it on the scale, and wrote it down. Start out with an E0. Then we add one swing weight uh, for the allowance for the eighth of an inch for the grip cap. Now we're at E1. We take our 50 gram grip and divide by 5, because 5 grams per swing weight, and we get 10. We, 